If you take a look at the global security environment, it is growing com um, complex, increasingly complex every single day. And we will continue to be more complex with rapid advancements in technologies, along with the rise of our near-peer competitors. We are seeing fundamental changes to the operating environment, the current and the future battlefields, with the acceleration of these technological advancements. The current operating environment represents a significant challenge to the United States Army and the Joint Force, along with our allies. The military modernization efforts of China, our pacing threat, and Russia, which though currently enmeshed in a difficult conflict with Ukraine, they still pose an enduring threat. Both have devised um, approaches to warfare that allows them to dir directly contest U.S. forces and their mechanism of choice are standoff capabilities. Now much of the focus on standoff looks at long-range missiles, hypersonic weapons, and also other advanced strike weapons. However, our adversaries also understand that there are other ways to target the United States forces and our allies. Their ability to use electronic and cyber warfare to target our networks, our ability to sense, and most importantly, our C2 apparatus to prevent our ability to converge our own multi-domain capabilities stands as a critical threat. Now, China and Russia would seek to use these capabilities in competition to win without fighting. In crisis and conflict, they would converge electronic and cyber warfare to separate the United States internally from our allies and our partners to separate the elements of the joint force. So what do we mean when we speak of EW and cyber warfare? Now, this audience knows better than I do what EW and cyber involves. So I'm not gonna bore you with the doctrinal terms. The EW and cyber battle space is why, why maintaining a unified network is so critically important. A unified network gives our force the ability to succeed in volatile, congested, contested environments in order to be successful on the battlefield of tomorrow. We must have a unified network that provides the joint force the ability to extend range and increase the speed of operations required for information and communication dominance. We have seen the effects of these capabilities in our current operational environment for some time now. EW has been part of many recent conflicts. It was featured heavily in Russia's 2014 conflict with Ukraine, including a shocking vignette of the Russians tricking a Ukrainian commander into returning a cell phone call from his mother so he could be geolocated and an artillery strike could take him out. We've also seen EW rampant in Syria, which was a testing ground to the, for Russia. In 2018, a United States Special Forces Operations Commander referred to Syria as the world's most aggressive electronic warfare environment, noting that U.S. pilots' communications were regularly jammed. China has even created an entire separate branch of its armed forces, the People's Liberation Army Strategic Support Force to undertake EW, cyber, and space operations more effectively. But if we're looking to see how a modern battlefield is impacted by EW and cyber warfare, we need to look no further than what is going on right now in Ukraine. The conflict between Russia and Ukraine is rife with examples of how EW and cyber converge to forge a sophisticated new kind of fight a fight for speed and relevancy.